Derek White getting swung at in a college football game scrum was just one of many instances of people wanting to destroy the 2024 championship winning Boston Celtics. We'll cover several of these instances, but mostly match the hating with some facts behind why the Seas are one of the greatest teams of all time. Trust me, keep it here. Right quick, just 24% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Hit thumbs up as it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Follow me on Instagram and X at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Thank you for your support. You're appreciated tremendously. As covered in my last Celtics video, Jason Tatum was called selfish by Kendrick Perkins for wanting MVP. So what's your word for Tatum wanting to win MVP? Selfish. Selfish. He's selfish. Which was already hypocritical based off the reason I gave in that vid, but it became 10 times more hypocritical when Perkins had this to say about Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is out to go get his, but Anthony Edwards also wants to stack up those individual accolades. Edwards also wants to be the future face of the NBA. And in order to get to that route, he knows just like everybody else, you got to go get that MVP. ESPN would evidently rather play games with Tatum than acknowledge what the man's accomplished throughout his career. At age 26, Jason scored the most playoff points of all time by a player before turning age 27, is the fastest player to reach 10,000 points in Celtic history, the first Celtic to average 30 points per game, a five-time All-Star, a four-time All-NBA player, an Eastern Conference Finals MVP, an All-Star Game MVP, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, and an NBA champion. It's time to stop playing games with this man, especially considering he's got 446 more minutes in the finals than Ja Morant, Paul George, Carmelo Anthony, Anthony Edwards, Joel Embiid, Shea Gilgis Alexander, the Memphis Grizzlies, the Charlotte Hornets, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and the LA Clippers combined. As a rookie, Tatum jumped right onto the scene out of Duke and didn't miss a beat in his transition to the association. Rookie JT posted the second most amount of playoff points by a first-year player in a single run of all time, only trailing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. It was in those 2018 playoffs where he helped fuel the Kyrie Irving-less Celtics one win from the finals, which included dunking on LeBron, that it became clear Tatum was a future superstar that was going to be dominating for the next decade plus. So far, that's been exactly the case. It's gone on to be such a successful career for JT that even his son Deuce, who Jason threw up in the air after winning the title, has more rings than a boatload of NBA stars. And I just picked them up and threw them. Deuce, come on back down, Deuce! <laughs> While Jalen Brown was a third overall pick just like Tatum, he had a different story coming out of college. He was a role player in his first year with the Celtics, and when he was drafted, people were saying he couldn't score at a high level, specifically that he was going to strictly be a slasher. Brown responded by instantly progressing into a near 40% three-point shooter as a sophomore, and annually developed to the point where he was a 27-point-per-game scorer by his seventh year, and a Finals MVP by his eighth. Jalen's up there with Kobe Bryant and Giannis Zetokounmpo as a few of the greatest development stories of all time. At age 27, Jalen's 74 playoff wins are more than eight NBA franchises. Brown's theory that he was left off Team USA's Olympic team twice because of his disagreements with Nike is something to think about given he was one of the best players in the 2024 playoffs. When White was picked over him, this thumbnail and video from Sporting Logically attempted to spread drama between the Celtics over it. Cooler heads would prevail and they weren't talking heads, as despite letting loose of some tweets directed at Nike, Jalen said he called Derek right away after he made the team over him. White spoke on the call by saying, quote, He gave me a call and said he just wanted to clear things up and I told him we're all good. Never any problem or issue with us for sure. He's a hell of a player and I've never had anything bad to say about JB. End quote. So the drama that some were trying to spread over this was quickly solved by two professionals, which is a great sign for Celtic fans. Despite getting hit in the head by a rowdy fan in the stands at a college football game, Derek White's coming off being the Celtics' third leading scorer throughout the 2024 playoffs. With a quick twitch trigger, devastating speed in the open court, a high awareness to set up teammates or take the open look when he needs to, and springiness defensively that help him hang in the air to pull off ridiculous swats like this one on Kyrie, White has about every skill a basketball player needs to be great. That's why it was so disappointing to see him in a scrum with a bunch of drunken idiots, but nevertheless, the fact that a fan swung at him is ridiculous in any context. What a clown that fan is. We're talking about one of the clutchest players in the league here in D-White. As in clutch time last year, during this season, he posted a shooting split of 55-52-100. 
and in the playoffs, he posted a shooting split of 50-60-100. Joe Mazzulla has also been downplayed recently in another attempt to rattle the Boston Celtics. CBS ranked Mazzulla as the 11th best head coach in the association, which is laughably disrespectful, given Joe owns the highest winning percentage by a coach in NBA history. Bred by his ability to cultivate commanding words of motivation that can light up the entire locker room and carry what's proven to be a championship roster. Joe also consistently drops outstanding quotes to the media that let us in on his creativity and boldness that make him the unique beast of a man in charge that he is. Missoula's latest elite statement reads, quote, The phrase defending a title is a passive-aggressive term. If you look at the animal kingdom, some of the strongest animals don't defend. They're the most aggressive, and they attack the most. End quote. A key cog in attacking the next title for Boston will be Drew Holiday. He hasn't gotten as much love as some of the other primary options in my recent Celtic videos and any at all from the mainstream, but Holiday was just as important on both ends of the floor as anyone else on the 2024 champs. Drew became the first player in NBA history to average at least 18 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists, with a 50-40-100 shooting split in a conference finals matchup throughout Boston's sweep of the Indiana Pacers. Drew's game-saving stop on the road in Game 3 of that series, where he stuck with Nemhard in transition, then neutralized his behind-the-back move and shuffled over to dominantly cut off the angle and knock it loose, was dubbed as Steal of the Year, and showed us how determined of a perimeter defender Holiday really is. Tatum spoke on the play post-game, saying, quote, He was feeling sick this morning. He wasn't even able to come to shoot around. So for him to come out here and put it all on the line for us and come up with a big play to win the game, we've got a hell of a team. End quote. A series later, Drew's 38 points through the first two games against Dallas were the most in a finals matchup without committing a turnover since Michael Jordan in 1998. One of the most successful players of this decade... When Drew was traded in a four-team deal involving Eric Bledsoe to the Bucks in 2020, his first year in Milwaukee threads saw him prove to be the missing link for another top contender, as he was a top two-way option contributing to the Bucks' 2021 championship. When he was dealt from Milwaukee to Portland in the Damian Lillard trade, then from Milwaukee to Boston in a deal involving the Time Lord Robert Williams, Holiday was incredibly, for a second straight time, a staple for his new team winning the title in his first year with them. It's been theorized that Jalen Brown was already done dirty by Nike with his disagreements with them potentially being the reason behind his snub for the Olympics, but Nike's now potentially tried to destroy the Celtics for a second time with these not-so-pretty city unis. The colors are just all wrong there in my book, but then again, art is subjective. Nevertheless, many trying to destroy the Celtics is upsetting, given how generational of a team this was in 2023-24 and looks to be heading into the future. Last year, the Celtics put ridiculous beatdowns on one team after the next. Eight players in Tatum, Brown, White, Holiday, Sam Hauser, Peyton Pritchard, Chris Daps, Porzingis, and Al Horford made at least 100 three-point field goals, and Boston's 11.6 net rating was tied for the third greatest in NBA history. This was to the core one of the most dominant teams ever, so let's start appreciating them. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.